I uh, want to watch your weather forecast before you go into shore. Just imagine after a night out of the town at 2 in the morning, you're trying to come back out to your boat in a small dinghy and this stuff. And, uh, you'll be, uh, it'll be more like swimming out than taking a dinghy ride out. I hope these uh, weather forecasters are right this time when these winds ease off. They're forecast to go down after noon today, so down to about 15 knots. We're still on the north, so it's still going to be choppy, but uh, hopefully it won't be so bad that uh, I can't get into, uh, can't get ashore later on this afternoon. Well, now that things have settled down a bit, we can get back to the big project, which is building a new mainsail cover. So, up on deck with tape measure and notepad. Measure twice, cut once, as they say. So the sail cover will be constructed in two halves. And back in the sail loft, which is also my dinner table and salon table. Uh, I've started cutting out the first half and here's what it looks like. Here's what my notepad looks like with the measurements I took. So once we've cut out the two halves, the next step is to join them together at the top of the cover which is the only place that the two halves will be joined. And so I'm starting in on stitching those together. And this whole thing will be stitched by hand. I do not have a mechanical sewing machine. But it's good practice, so. So after we've sewed the two halves together, next we'll start in on the tabling, which if this was an article of clothing would be known as the hem. You're simply folding the edge over and sewing it to reinforce it. So I just heard the news that Neil Peardis passed away. Apparently he died about a week ago. So we're stitching the rush today. Got Grace Under Pressure on the MP3. One of my favorite Rush albums. Now we're starting in with the roping here, which is right around what I'm calling the collar, which is just the part that wraps around the mast. So we will rope this uh, so that we can tie it around the mast, and the, the rope of course adds a good deal of reinforcement. Because otherwise, especially in the center here, these stitches are liable to pull out without the from the tension, from the tension uh, without the support of the rope. So with the roping completed and the two halves sewed together, uh, that's enough to tie it on so we can just test for fit here. Of course it's a windy day. It is frequently windy in Key West, at least in, in the winter time I have found. Uh, I thought it would be less windy than the Virgin Islands since you're not in the trade wind belt, but as I say, at least in the winter, it, uh, it feels like trade winds a good deal of the time. I'm going to want to cut a taper in the end of the cover uh, toward the end of the boom, which is what I'm marking up right now. So I decided I'm going to have to rope the end that uh, wraps around the boom as well, because again, this seam right here where the two halves come together, that's a weak point. If I pull on the grommets, this is going to tear so I think it uh, it needs the support of a bolt rope. So and so it'll go. This will go around the end of the bone, and then we'll just tie it here. And then there'll be grommets to 
uh, to keep it from slipping forward. Okay, so now we are on to the tabling on the bottom of the cover and the grommets will go through this tabling and it is it goes on for 18 feet and I just did one half uh, which took me I think three days you know about an hour of stitching a day so we're gonna start on the second half here and uh, so 36 feet total of hand stitching However, I looked at the weather forecast and it looks like we have another strong cold front which is going to come sweeping over the Keys. And after what happened previously with the mooring breaking on me, I'm probably just plain paranoid at this point. So I'm going to dive down and tie a second additional rope directly to the mooring. And I didn't quite get it there, you can see the loop. I got about a half tied bowl in there and I, I ran out of breath. So, dive down again and tie that one. Alright, looks like we got that tied. And so, you can see the other line laying on the bottom there. That was the first line I tied directly to the mooring shackle. So now I got two. And you can see the two of them, loops laying on the bottom. So now I'm going to tie my lines from the boat uh, to those loops. So then I'll have two lines tied directly to the mooring ball and two lines tied directly to the shackle, uh, which goes to the mooring itself. And so hopefully. With all that, I won't be feeling too panicky if these winds get up over 30 knots, as they're forecast to do. Once we get that tied, we just have to make sure that we have everything tied fast up on deck. <coughs> yeah, got some water in my lungs, so I'm coughing like crazy here. Well, one boat has broken loose so far, but it looks like it looks like the mooring didn't break. It was, uh, in fact, I can see one of the guy's dock lines hanging over. I, I think it was uh, it was his lines that broke, probably chafed through. Uh, and that looks like the marina boat. They're trying to grab the mooring right now. So it's Tuesday evening, the 21st of January.
coming down the home stretch here. This is uh, ending an 18 foot long section of hand stitching. And there were two of them, so it's 36 feet. So, a little bit each day gets it done, right? After this, we should be ready to put the grommets in. And then we should be done. So at long last, about three weeks later, we are down to the final step, which is to put the grommets in. I use that little handy brass grommet maker, which is actually makes it a fairly fun and easy job. So the cover ends up with some fun work at the end. And with that, we are ready to begin a new day with a new mainsail cover.